This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at a script I created that creates primitives at your selection. This is a great time saver when you're modeling, so let's check it out. Okay, to start out to demonstrate this script, I'm just going to go and create a polygon cube, and then I'm going to scale it up a bit around there, let's say, and then I'm just going to rotate it arbitrarily, and then I'm going to go to modify and do a freeze transformations. So it's going to freeze transform and everything's going to be busted here. My object is going to be world aligned now instead of object aligned. And the reason I did that is because when you create the primitives with this tool, it will actually align to the components normal that you have selected, and this can be super handy. So if you've purchased the full Megascript pack, you'll see a new button here called CPass. And what that stands for is Create Primitive at Selection. So if you have a component selected, let's say a face, I'm just going to grab that there, and then you click the button with the left mouse button, boom, it's going to create a locator. And you can see the locator is actually aligned with the face normal. Now, if you had a vert and you did the same thing and you clicked it, you'd get the locator aligned with the vert normal and so on and so forth, an edge, whatever, click it, and you get the aligned with the edge normal there. And something I'll use the locators for is actually to move the pivots around to different objects. So let's say I had a cylinder and my pivot for that object was there, and I wanted to remember where that pivot was, but I wanted to like snap this guy to the center of this empty area. You could just select all the edges, let's say, click the button and you get the locator in the center of that selection and then you could snap that up and then you could delete the locator so then I can scale from that point. And I actually find I do this quite a bit, just being able to show me where the pivot is. If I have an object selected, it's not gonna go to the component, it's gonna go to the object pivot. So if I click it there, see we get a locator there. So it's nice if you like froze the transform or something, modify, freeze transforms and uh, modify, reset pivot, let's say, reset your pivots over there, you can always get it back because you know where the locator is. So if the pivot was actually here, let's say, and you click it, it'll create the locator there. So if you've lost your pivot information, you can be like, oh, okay, wait, no problem. I just snap it back. So that can be handy in a lot of situations, actually. But what's even more handy is if you right click the button, you'll see you can create cube, plane, sphere, cylinder. You can also go to the help if you want to learn how to use the tool. And this is where you save all the time. So let's say I want to create a primitive here. So you can see my transform is still gone. It's just flattened out. I don't have that access. If I right click, create cube, boom, I get a cube and it's access aligned to that actual face normal. So then I can just scale it, whatever. I can press T on the keyboard and adjust subdivisions because the cube has history because it's a base primitive. And then I can start working from there. I can select another face and I can either right click to choose a different primitive or I can press G on the keyboard to repeat last primitive. So I'm gonna press G and boom, you've got another cube there. Then press T, adjust what you wanna have going on there and so on and so forth. I can come and select an edge, press G, boom, got a cube there, select another edge, boom, got one there. Uh, let's do a vert. Boom, got one there. And see, it actually aligns the uh, transform, the rotation of the newly created primitive to whatever the component normal is. So this is super time saving when you're modeling stuff. You can also select multiple components. So let's say I selected these three verts here and then click the button, right click cube. It'll put the cube to the average of that normal in the center of that selection. So let's say I got four edges here, select all those four edges, right click, make a cube. See, it's gonna align that way instead because that's the average normal of that component selection. Most of the time you're just gonna wanna use this in single, that's the single component, that's the most reliable way and that's probably what most people are gonna wanna do with it. So face, super helpful, edge, press G, super helpful, align to that exact edge. And of course you can do the other primitive types as well. So Select a face, right click, make a plane. There's your plane, press T, adjust however many subdivisions you want, whatever, do what you want. Select another face, G, there's your plane again. Select an edge, there's your plane, so on and so forth. And then we've got a sphere as well. So see, it aligns the sphere to that normal. So you can start working on whatever you wanna do there. If you did it on the corner, do a sphere, it'll go along that way, whatever. Uh, cylinder as well, so same thing, aligns to that or aligns to this. And of course you can just press T and then adjust the segments to be whatever you want. 
So it saves you a lot of time. You don't have to create the object at zero and then move it to where you want to go and then try to eyeball align it or whatever. Select an edge, whatever, right click and cylinder and it goes along that edge. Same with that, same with that. So just a really nice way, saves you a ton of time creating primitives this way. You don't have to go through this weird menu and then like do all that extra steps. Also super helpful for aligning something to a surface as you create it. I mean, I often need to get a cylinder aligned to a face that I've already created. So this is a really nice way to do it. So on top of all of that, you can use this system to create all of your primitives and never have to go back into that other menu because if you have nothing selected and you right click and go create whatever cylinder, it will put it at zero, zero, zero in the world. And then you can just scale it to what you want, press T and, you know, add, change your subdivisions to whatever you want. If you have an object selected instead of a component, right click cylinder, it's going to create the cylinder at the pivot point of that object, and it's going to align it with the object's rotation. So I've frozen the rotation here, so that just aligns it to the world. But if the pivot of that object was over here, let's say, and I did the same thing, cylinder, see it makes the cylinder there. Now if you had a cube, I'm just going to use my tool to create it because I don't need to go there anymore. Right click, cube, scale it up a little bit here, rotate it arbitrarily to whatever and don't freeze the transform so i've actually got some real rotation in there now if we have the object selected and we go cube see it aligns it perfectly with that object and then you can go along there so you have a bunch of different options and you never really need to do anything other than right click choose primitive type and then based on what your selection is that's where it's going to create where the thing appears and how it aligns which is awesome. I've already been using this a little bit and it's just, it's so nice to say, just give me a cylinder right on this edge, go here, boom, and then I can work. I'm making a sub D model at home right now for fun. And this is just, it's so much easier to model this way. Really nice. And then next, I just want to show how it works on the selection center of the component. So in Maya, if you select a single face, you might think, oh, the center of the face is going to be here. But if you look at the move tool, it's actually right down the edge there. And that's because the move tool actually creates a bounding box around your selection. And so that's why it ends up being in the center there. So if you select the face here, that's not really the center. And so I figured out a way to actually make it go to the center of the face. So if we go here, cube. You can see it actually tries to align it and put it in the center of the real center of the selection. And you can preview what that center of the selection is if you want to by selecting a component or some components and then switching the move tool to component. So you can see the thing jumps there and that's because the difference between object is there and component is there. And so I use the component average normal and component average pivot position to generate the primitive right there. And what that means is you can select an average of the components and the pivot will try to align to that, the whole average. So if we go into face mode here and we select like a bunch of these, let's say, you can see the move tool is all wonky or whatever, but if we switch to component mode, see it's like nice and aligned there and it's in the center. So when we go create cube, it aligns it along the average normal, which can be super helpful in a lot of situations. So pretty cool stuff. You could also do this, like grab all of these edges, do cube, whatever. You'll get all different types of results or whatever. Or you can always just get a single edge, press G, and get it aligned to that like single edge. OK, so you may have noticed that the objects get created at the same scale every time. But if that doesn't work for you and the default scale is either too big or too small, you can adjust that in the script really easily. I've made it so if you right click and you say edit pop up and then select cube, plane, sphere or cylinder over here, you can see the scale, the float primitive scale equals 10. And you'll see that same bit of code for each one of these. And so all you need to do is change that. So if we change that to, let's say, two, for example, just close the window. Then select an edge and right click and say cube and boom, there you go. Now the cube or whatever primitive you set is set to that scale. So you can quickly go in and edit that to be whatever you need for your projects. If you've already purchased the mega script pack or the modeling pack, this will be a free update. So you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff.
If you haven't purchased the script yet, you can grab the script by itself in the modeling pack, or you can get it in the mega script pack. So take your pick. Thanks very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad free. See you next time. Have a radical day.